About a hundred years ago, there was a very interesting debate going on among astronomers. It was about whether the Milky Way was the only galaxy in the universe. Of course, we had pictures of Andromeda and the Magellanic Clouds, but they were thought to be star systems within our own galaxy. The clash of beliefs was so intense that it led to the famous great debate between Harlow Shapley and Heber Curtis on 26 April 1920. Unfortunately, no conclusion was obtained from the debate, ending with an unsatisfying draw. It was in 1925 that this dispute was once and for all settled by Edwin Hubble. He gave us evidence that there are, in fact, other galaxies outside the Milky Way by measuring their distance and velocity. Hubble found that these galaxies were moving away from us and this observation laid the foundation of an expanding universe and an initial Big Bang. But although this was a groundbreaking observation in astronomy, there was another thing that caught Hubble's attention. As he discovered more galaxies, he started noting a peculiar pattern. He found that the velocity with which the galaxies move away from us is more for distant galaxies. That means the recessional velocity of a galaxy is directly proportional to its distance from us. In other words, the farther a galaxy is in deep space, the faster it appears to be moving away from us. This is the famous Hubble's Law. The relationship between the two parameters is simple, but transforming it into an equation gives birth to the most controversial constant in cosmology, the Hubble constant. Over the past decades, researchers have attempted to restrict the value of the Hubble constant to a single number. They have devoted several techniques to calculate its value, only to discover they disagree with each other. This has further increased the chaos around estimating this number, leading us to question the fundamentals of our understanding of the cosmos. But before we get to it, let's grasp the essence of what this number truly represents. The Hubble constant originates from Hubble's law. If V is the velocity with which a galaxy in deep space is moving away from us, and D is its distance from us, then V and D are connected through the Hubble constant, H0. So the Hubble constant simply describes the expansion rate of the universe. If we rearrange this equation, we can easily determine the units of this constant. Conventionally, the velocity of a galaxy in deep space is measured in kilometers per second and the distance in megaparsecs. A parsec is a unit of length equal to 3.26 light years and a megaparsec is a million times that distance. So if the value of the Hubble constant is 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec, this means that for every megaparsec of distance, the universe is expanding at a rate of 70 kilometers per second. Isn't it mind-boggling to consider such a fast rate? Understanding the conceptual meaning of the Hubble constant is straightforward. The problem begins when we try to determine its accurate value. Let's go back to the equation of Hubble's law. To find the value of h0, we need the recessional velocity of the galaxy v and its distance d. The velocity can be easily calculated by noting its redshift. This is a measure of the stretching of light emitted by that galaxy due to the universe's expansion. The more the redshift, the faster the galaxy moves away from us. The whole problem lies in calculating the distance to that galaxy. There are many ways to calculate cosmic distances, each of which has a definite range at which it can work. For example, the parallax method works well to calculate distances of nearby stars up to a few hundred light years. Then, astronomers use main sequence fitting to find distances of the order of 10,000 light years within our galaxy. Further, the Cepheid variable method finds distances to nearby galaxies up to 25 megaparsecs or 80 million light years. Hubble originally used the Cepheid variable stars in the galaxies for measuring distance. Cepheids are variable stars whose brightness fluctuates with time. They pulsate with a variability period that directly correlates with their intrinsic brightness. By comparing their intrinsic brightness and apparent brightness, one can estimate their distance from us using the distance modulus equation. 
At last, the supernova method enables astronomers to determine the distances of deep space galaxies that lie billions of light years away. Type 1a supernova happens when a white dwarf feeds on its companion star and absorbs too much material in the course, disrupting its hydrostatic equilibrium. This results in a sudden, extremely bright explosion of white dwarf into a supernova, making it an ideal standard candle to calculate distances of billions of parsecs. But the issue with this stepwise measurement of cosmic distance, called the cosmic distance ladder, is the uncertainty that compounds with each step. Recently, Planck's Pantheon Plus analysis analyzed roughly 1,550 Type 1a supernovae. When these data were combined with the Hubble Shoes Program study of the Cepheid variables, the Hubble constant was determined to be 73.4 km per second per megaparsec. So what is the big fuss around its measurement? The problem is that the result from these two programs correspond to the expansion rate of the current universe, as they study the light from galaxies at a distance of about 1 to 2 billion parsecs away. What happens if we compare this with the expected expansion rate? A better question would be, how to calculate such an expansion rate? The answer is cosmic microwave background, or CMB radiation. About 400,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe cooled enough for the nuclei to trap the electrons and form the first stable atoms. This gave way to the photons, and the universe became transparent for the first time. Today, the light from that event has redshifted and can be found in the microwave frequency. So, the CMB is basically the afterglow of the Big Bang. Studying the evolution of CMB with fluctuations in density and temperature through the various gravitational influences since the early stages of the universe should give us an estimate of the Hubble constant in the present day. As this radiation evolved with the universe, by providing prior information about the amount of mass and energy present within the universe, the evolution of CMB radiation can be modeled, and CMB maps can be produced. This way, the Hubble constant's theoretical value can be obtained. The only problem is that the results do not match. The most detailed map of CMB by Planck mission has given an estimate of about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Although they seem remarkably close, given that they are obtained from two different independent approaches, the supernova result and theoretical value differ by about 10%, which is a big deal. The supernova method predicts the universe to expand at a rate 10% faster than what the CMB method predicts. That is it. That is the crisis and one of the biggest unsolved problems in cosmology. There are two possible explanations for this discrepancy. Either there is a measurement mistake in one or both studies, or both measurements may be accurate, and this discrepancy is revealing something new about the universe. So astronomers need to look for new methods to calculate extragalactic distances to resolve the discrepancy. Recently, a team of astronomers from the University of Chicago has developed a new technique that could verify the previous results. They use stars called red giants to measure distance. The interesting property of these red giants is that they undergo an event called helium flash on reaching a certain luminosity resulting in reduced brightness afterward. There's a cutoff or a limit to which a red giant star's luminosity and it can't get any brighter. Astronomers then compare the red giants in the Milky Way with those in other galaxies to determine their distance. The red giant method yields a number of 69.8 kilometers a second per megaparsec, which is neither here nor there. This value is not close enough to resolve the controversy around the Hubble constant However, it reveals more about our fundamental understanding of the universe, a new possibility to learn. Undoubtedly, the discovery of expanding universe and the expansion rate is the most crucial event in the history of cosmology. Nonetheless, researchers are still striving to get precise values for the Hubble constant by building CMB telescopes, using gravitational lensing techniques, and gravitational waves from neutron star mergers. 
These endeavors may pave the pathway for an entirely new era in our understanding of the evolving universe. The controversy around the Hubble constant has opened the door to several unknowns of the cosmos. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, subscribe to our channel, and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any future videos of this series.